Bed Bath & Beyond CFO Gustavo Arnell jumps to his death amidst short squeeze pump and dump stock scandal. Well, guys, <laughs> we have a crazy one for you today. This, this story has everything. Um, welcome to Focus on Investing, where we focus on investing. My name is Focus, and I'm focused on investing. And thank you for focusing and investing your time and attention on this video today. As I said in the intro, guys, this, this, this is a crazy story today. We have everything. So we're going to break down the whole, everything you need to know about what's been going on with uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, what the company is, you know, what's been happening with this short squeeze, what's been happening with the pump and dump, what's been happening with the death of their CEO. You know, we've got it all. So guys, if you haven't done so already, pay your respects and hit that like button when you come through the door. Also hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get this stock information immediately as it drops. You know, I record these videos and put them out straight away so you can be up to date on the latest stock information. And, you know, you want to be up to date because, you know, there's money being made out here. You know, today, we've, later on, we've got a story about Jake Freeman and Jake Freeman, you know, he made millions off of this bed, bath and beyond trade. So, you know, if you don't want to miss out on your opportunity to get rich and fire your boss, Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that uh, bell icon as you don't want to be, you know, late on the news. You don't want to hear about an opportunity, you know, a couple hours or a few days later because you didn't get the notification about the video. So, you know, do the right thing and hit that subscribe button. All right, let's get into this. We're going to start with, you know, a brief introduction of Bed Bath & Beyond. I know most people probably know what it is, but just because it's a, a U.S company you know those outside of the u.s and they're not an international company as well those outside of the u.s might not know who they are so i'm going to do a quick brief overview I'm not going to spend too long on, on on exactly who they are and then we're going to move on with the story so this is bed bath and beyond this is their website essentially they sell a lot of homewares they've got bedding bath kitchen dining storage and cleaning curtains windows home decor baby and kids outdoor furniture luggage health and beauty gifts so you can see they've got labor they'll stay sale going on general household wares kitchen uh what is this bedding towels etc etc so we're not going to spend too long on this but just to give people an idea of what the company does to those who don't know it's pretty much exactly what it says on the tin they do bed bath and beyond all right let's move on let's pull up our next screen so for those who don't know Bed Bath & Beyond has actually been one of the big short squeeze kind of stocks that's been floating around in the markets. So what am I putting up this screen here? So we're looking at here, Bed Bath & Beyond stock, why we might see another short squeeze, All right? So as I said, this, this has been a, a, one of the big short squeeze stocks of the year for those who haven't been like up to date on, on what's been going on with certain stocks. So we're going to get into the reason why it's been a short squeeze stock and, and, and you know, what the, 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 the outlook on this was as to why people did it. So it says, despite Ryan Cohen's exodus from BBBY, which is the ticker symbol for Bed Bath & Beyond, retail investors are still interested in the stock. Here's what investors should know. So we said Bed Bath & Beyond has been an obvious short selling target thanks to its deteriorating business fundamentals. However, there are many risks involved in short selling a stock that's even more true for meme stocks. With Bed Bath & Beyond's popularity among retail investors growing, it may not be game over yet for Bed Bath & Beyond. So essentially, you know, it's been a short selling target because there's been deteriorating business fundamentals. The business behind, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond has been bad, but um, it's also become a meme stock. So a meme stock, stock is essentially a stock that has gained popularity outside of its, you know, investment fundamentals, right? It might just have like general, you know, popularity. I, I refer to them as hype stocks because it just kind of gets a uh, movement behind them where people just have kind of like an emotional connection to a particular stock and that affects, you know, the price of the stock. So it doesn't really correlate with, you know, general fundamentals, but they call them meme stocks just simply because, you know, groups of people, you know, kind of get on its back and, and get take a, a liking to this stock. All right. So why are short sellers tug in BBBY? At first glance, Bed Bath & Beyond 
might seem like a no-brainer short play. There are a number of reasons why, and this is why we're going to get into why they were short in them. Among them, there is cumulative negative earnings over the last few years. Earnings yield of minus 72%. Seven earnings missed in the previous 10 quarters. Return on invested capital, ROIC, of minus 26%. Liquidity down sharply to its worst level in at least 10 years. Cash burn of roughly half a billion dollars in the first quarter. Total equity debt, total total equity debt at the highest level in the company's history. So you can see a number of reasons. They've listed six reasons here as to why short sellers are targeting, um, you know, Bed Bath and Beyond, right? So short sellers, for those who don't know, short sellers are essentially people who have bet that the price of the company is going to go down. If you go on to our Focus on Investing um, page, You'll see a card also pop up here explaining what exactly is short squeezing and short selling. So once you understand how to make money from a company losing money, you understand how short selling works and what short sellers are. So again, you should, you should see a card popping up um, on your screen right now to explain a video of what short sellers are. But short sellers have targeted Bed Bath & Beyond because of these reasons. Essentially, the company has been performing badly. You know, all the forecasts and the reports have been um, performing badly and showing bad reports. So people have been short squeezing, short selling it, excuse me. It's no wonder that Bed Bath & Beyond's short flow is nearly 40%. Of course, there's another big reason why Bed Bath & Beyond is so attractive to short sellers. Bed Bath & Beyond doesn't have any clear prospects for achieving profitability in the short term. So this is an interesting <laughs> uh, statement. I'm going to read this again because it's going to come in important later. Bed Bath & Beyond doesn't have any clear prospects for achieving profitability in the short term. So there's no prospect of it being profitable in the short term. The company reported a drop in sales growth of 25% last year compared to an industry high of 61%. Next year, Bed Bath & Beyond sales are expected to grow 1.7%, which is better than the industry-wide expectation of 0.6% decrease. Still, it is not enough. So even though it's expected next year to grow by 1.7% and the market or the industry expected to grow 0.6%, it's still not enough. Um, we're not going to read what the risk of short selling and stop are. You can read that in, uh, you can watch that in our video. Uh, the rise and fall of Bed Bath & Beyond stock. Meme stocks are often known for defying investment logic. And this is what I spoke about earlier. Oftentimes, they don't really correlate with any sort of investment strategy. It's really just an emotional thing that groups of people take to them. Retail investors most often invest in meme stocks not necessarily because they like the company's fundamentals, but because they're seeking gains by forcing short sellers to cover their positions, causing short squeezes. And again, we go into more on what short squeezes are in our video. In January 2021, several meme stocks soared, most famously GameStop, which is GME. This caused sizable losses for hedge fund giants such as Melvin Capital that had been shorting the stocks. Bed Bath & Beyond has also been a meme stock since January 2021, when retail investors drove the price of BBBY up about 100% in the course of a month. So we can see how these, shorts, um, these short squeezes have driven the price of uh, BBBY up. In the first few months of this year, meme stock investors pushed Bed Bath & Beyond stock higher Again, after the announcement that GameStop chair Ryan Cohen had purchased nearly 10% of the company shares. Bed Bath & Beyond stock went viral on Reddit's main forums such as Wall Street Bets and enjoyed impressive rallies. But in August, news that Cohen was selling his entire stake brought the BBBY, BBB, BBBY meme rally to a halt. It's still not game over for Bed Bath & Beyond. In recent weeks, rising stock market fears have contributing to the damaging, the dampening of investors' spirits in general. 
Jim Cramer, <laughs> a nemesis of mean stock investors, recently commented that the bearish narrative about Bed Bath and Beyond hasn't changed. Um, this, this suggests that it might not be game over for Bed Bath and Beyond's mean stock investors. Uh, let's skip some of these. I'm going to put the links to all of these articles that we got, we're we um, reading here in the, the description, so you guys can you know read in in full if you want to. Um, yeah, so let's let's leave it at that for for this article. Again, I'm going to put this this the link to this article in the chat. Oh, sorry, in the description if you guys want to want to see it. So that basically explains you know why this whole stock was shorted. And exactly, you know, why people looked at it in that sort of fashion. All right, let's go into this next article, which is really interesting. So amid all of this short squeezing going on and the bad performance of this stock, out of nowhere, this stock started to do well, but... <laughs> There was a little bit of funny business going on, right? There was a little bit of funny business. So we could, we're going to find out a bit more about what this funny business was with the CFO and, you know, what kind of entanglements he was getting involved in with this company. Entanglement. An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> entanglement. Yeah, entanglements. <laughs> so revealed... Bed Bath and Beyond CFO who leapt to his death from New York's famed Jenga building is accused of role in pump and dump scheme that artificially inflated value of, fa of flailing company and cost shareholders 1.2 billion. <laughs> so yeah, you read that right, right. So what happened basically, and we're going to go into more detail, is as this company was failing because of this, you know, bad and sort of bad performance of the company and then a lot of people ended up shorting this company you know the cfo ended up getting into shenanigans and ended up pumping artificially artificially inflating the value of this company and pumping the value of this company right and then once he got found out and got a lawsuit put against him he actually leapt to his death and this happened today well, I think it happened yesterday, but the news about it is coming out today. So this is, you know, you're right up on the news, right? So let's let's get into this. Gustavo R now, 52, is being sued for allegedly inflating the Bed Bath & Beyond stock price in a pump and dump scheme. The lawsuit filed August 23rd claims a majority shareholder approached Arnell about a plan to control the shares of the company so that they could both profit. As part of the plan, it says, Arnell agreed to regulate all insider sales. It alleges he put out materially misleading statements showing the company's finance were improving to artificially raise the share prices. By the time he sold over 42,000 shares in the company two weeks ago, it was valued at $1 million. Arnell then took his own life by jumping from the 18th floor of the famous Jenga Tower in Manhattan's Tribeca neighborhood on Friday. So I'm not going to read all of this, but I've highlighted some a few key you know, sentences and paragraphs. Gustavo Arnell, 52, is listed as one of the defendants in a class action lawsuit brought by a group of shareholders who claim that they lost around $1.2 billion when Arnell and majority shareholder Ryan Cohen engaged in a pump and dump scheme. So this is him. This is the guy. Uh, Gustavo Arnell, get a good look at his face. <laughs> and that's his family, unfortunately, you know. This is the aftermath of his jumping from the building. Um, Arnell jumped to his death from the 18th floor, 18th floor of a 57th floor building in Manhattan's Tribeca neighborhood on Friday. So, unfortunately, that's him. And this is the building. You can see why they call it the Jenga building. The class action lawsuit was built was brought by Virginia resident Pen Cheng Pacheng C on behalf of all those who purchased Bed Bath & Beyond stocks between March 25th and August 18th. They are now seeking damages for the alleged pump and dump scheme, 
claiming that Cohen offered to purchase a large stake in the company, including call options for more than 1.6 million sh shares, I think that's supposed to be, with prices between $60 and $80. In exchange, the suit alleges Arnell would ensure that insiders would not flood the market with the stock. He did so, he did so allegedly by making materially misleading statements and admissions about the company's financial standing in an effort to artificially inflate the share price, the suit stays. Through mid-August 2022, BBBY appeared from the company's public statements and financial reporting to be a successfully to be a successful turning around company, it alleges. But in reality, it says, Arnell blatantly misrepresented the value of the value and profitability of the company, causing BBBY to report revenues that was fictitious and announced publicly that the company is successfully on its way, spinning off Bye Bye Baby to unlock the full value of this tremendous asset. Bye Bye Baby though, was not actually doing well financially, the lawsuit claims. So essentially what this paragraph is saying is that, you know, uh, Arnell put out four statements claiming that the company is doing well, and that is what caused the price of the company to go up. And in that, when the company price went up, he artificially pumped the value of the company up by making false misleading statements. When the company pumped up, he ended up dumping a lot of his shares. In, in, in other words, you know, taking advantage of the artificially inflated price in order to uh, make a profit. He said, then on August 16, Cohen filed a document to the Securities and Exchange Commission saying he owned 9,450,100 shares, including 1,670,000 on 100 shares under certain call options. It also claimed he held on to his April call options that would only begin to pay out if the stock hit $60 a share before January 20, 2023. He was soon granted three seats on the board of the company, the lawsuit alleges, but had actually sold off most of his shares in the company at that point. See, so he misled the people, misled people on how many shares he had and what he would do with those shares. So he said he wouldn't sh um, sell them until $60 a share, right? Instead, the lawsuit claims Cohen submitted the document for purposes of creating a buying frenzy of BBBY stock so that Cohen can finish selling his shares at an artificially inflated price. So, you know, he submitted this document and intentionally caused a buying frenzy to pump up this price. Stock prices rose 75% that day, the lawsuit alleges, but unbeknownst to shareholders, it claims that the same day, Cohen also filed a form signifying his intent to sell the remainder of his share and call options. It was not disclosed to the public until the market closed the following day, when shares tumbled from a record high of $30 per share to around $22.50 a share. Then after Arnell and Cohen filed a form saying they sold all of their shares on August 16, the stock down the stock down 45% to $16.16. Cents. So the stock down that much is a bit of um, uh, a typo there, I guess. It, it then continued to plummet to $8.78 on August 23, down more than 70% from its high of $30 a share. By September 4th, Bed Bath & Beyond was trading at just $8.63. So what he did basically, you know, artificially made statements and filed documents to inflate the price and also give, you know, investors the false impression that he had a certain amount of stocks when really he already, you know, uh, planned to sell them or had already sold them. But by the time people found out it was at the close of the market. So when the market reopened again, you know, there was like a frenzy to sell after he gave a, a buying frenzy by, you know, making those statements and by submitting those documents, he then created like a selling frenzy. So it pumped and spiked up and then it dumped again as soon as that happened. So, so yeah, so this is basically what caused the frenzy in the pump and dump, right? Um, so I spoke earlier about, you know,
you know, people making money, making millions off of this stock. So this here is uh, Jake Freeman, as I spoke about earlier. So while all this was going on with this CFO, this guy who was a student, he said, Arnell's stock dump came at the same day a 20-year-old college student made $110 million by selling all of his Bed Bath & Beyond stock. But he did so just before the retailer stock price, price slumped 23% after its second biggest shareholder indicated plans to sell his entire holding. So, yeah, guys, this is why you should be, you know, staying close to the updates that we drop about these stocks. You know, you want to be in position to get the latest information, you know, exactly what's going on with these, with these stock information. You know, we put them out, these videos out, giving you the immediate stock information as soon as we record them. So, again, if you guys haven't done so, make sure you subscribe to the button. Put, subscribe to the channel and press the subscribe button, excuse me. <laughs> and if you'd like to support the channel, you can um, hit our cash app, which is at the bottom of the screen, which is cash app, British pound sign, focus on investing. All right, let's continue on with the story. Let's go to our next article. Our next article is this one. So let's, this is a story about the, the, the short sellers and what happened. So we know that people, you know, was, so among, amongst this, this pump and dump spike, all right? So those, there were those that were short selling. Now, obviously, once it started pumping and spiking, then the short sellers um, started losing money, right? So this is the story of, about what happened to the short sellers that were uh, invested or involved in this, right? So it said, Bed Bath & Beyond short sellers may have turned $112 million in losses to profit in just three days. So while we was having this um, pump and dump spike, you know, short sellers were having loss of $112 million. So it says Bed Bath & Beyond is one of the most heavily shortest stocks in the market. Bed Bath & Beyond stock is now down 31%, 31.6% since Tuesday's close. So it said Bed Bath & Beyond Inc., BBBY, shares were down another 4.7% on Friday after the company's turnaround plan failed to impress Wall Street. So we're going to get into their turnaround plan in a minute and why it failed to impress Wall Street. So after this pump and dump thing and this, all this whole thing was going on, you know, they announced a turnaround plan. But as you can see here, that the plan failed to impress Wall Street. Bed Bath & Beyond is one of the most heavily shorted stocks in the market. And short sellers have had a big week of gains as the market has lost faith in the popular mean stock, the numbers. Following Tuesday's close, S3 Partners analyst Ihor Duwanski said that Bed Bath & Beyond had about $386 million in short interest, representing about 27.5% of the stock's adjusted float. Bed Bath & Beyond stock seller, short stock sellers had endured about $120 million in 2022 marking mark-to-market losses. But those losses have shrunk significantly in the past three days, Dusanuanski said. Bed Bath & Beyond shares are now down 31.6% since Tuesday close. Based on S3 numbers, short sellers may have completely erased their year-to-day losses in that stretch. <laughs> A 31.6 gain on $386 million dollars in short interest represents about 121.9 million in profits, assuming that the company's short interest has remained constant since Tuesday. Epic short squeeze. Bed Bath and Beyond's let me get rid of this advert. Bed Bath and Beyond's short interest is up 39.5% in the past year, according to Y Charts. Short sellers have been spot on with their bearish call at this point. Shares of the struggling retailer are down 65.8% over the last 12 months, 
which included a brief but extremely volatile squeeze in August. For several days, Bed Bath & Beyond was the most popular meme stock on the Wall Street Beds subreddit, which sent the stock soaring from under $5 in late July to its high as to as high as $30 on August 17. In the two weeks that followed, the stock has now traded all the way back down to $8.27. So you can see what the whole story of the, the short squeezes um, happened. They thought they were in trouble for a while, and then you know they, they, they got a bit of a reprieve as this whole thing turned around. So let's go to our next article. Remember, guys, we do reviews of all different kind of stocks um we do crypto reviews we do forex reviews we do commodity reviews as well so if you have any stocks or any asset that you would like us to review put it in the comments and then we will be sure to review that asset for you and again guys you know let me hear your thoughts on this whole kind of situation some are saying that you know the ceo didn't jump he may have been pushed he may have failed. What are your guys' opinions? Do you, do you guys think that this guy, you know, tapped out? He hit the control or delete button because of this lawsuit? Or do you think it was just a coincidence of, of what happened in this situation? And let me know, guys, have you got, are you guys involved in shorting this? Have you shorted this stock? Or maybe you got involved in the short squeeze? Um, let me know what your position is in this. Are you part of the shorters or the short squeezers? Let me know what side of the game you're representing right now. So, you know, as we had all of this, this bad performance of this company and all this pump and dump going on, Bed Bath & Beyond ended up naming, a, like announcing a plan for a turnaround, like a revival plan, right? So this is basically what their plan was, right? So BBBY, Bed Bath & Beyond Inc. is planning to, planning to restructure its struggling business. So this is what they announced. Here's what BBB announced yesterday. It is going to have over five million in new financing as it seeks to se to steady its business. It will close 150 of its stores and lay off over 20 percent of its workforce. BBBY's goal is to cut costs to fix its business in time for the holiday season. So they're planning to do this before you know Christmas and um, Thanksgiving and all of that. The retailer plans to bring back popular brands and overhaul the shopping experience. Um, yeah, so this was their plan to, to turn around what happened. But remember, I said Wall Street were not very impressed. So let's go and see what Wall Street and, and a lot of financials, financial analysts are thinking about, you know, this whole turnaround thing. <laughs> Let's go where yes, yeah, this article here. So what do they think? Uh, so this is from Yahoo Finance. Remember, we're going to put the link to all of these articles in the description so you can check it out in more detail if you wish to. It said Bed Bath & Beyond's turnaround plan is too little, too late to avoid bankruptcy. It said Bed Bath and & Beyond unveil its turnaround strategy this week, but it likely won't be enough to save the company, according to a restructuring expert. It's been, I've been in this business for 35 years in restructuring and turnaround. And unfortunately, it's just a little bit too little, too late. MAC Mako CEO Drew Manigal told Yahoo Finance Live. And there's a video here if you want to watch it later. They have should have started this process last year if they had been paying attention to the post-pandemic numbers. I'm not going to be one bit surprised if the Chapter 11, and Chapter 11 is bankruptcy, petitions have already been drafted or are just waiting for a signature, McManigal added. Bed Bath & Beyond's aggressive turnaround strategy includes plans to raise cash, close approximately 150 150 stores and cut 20% of its corporate and supply chain staff as it streamlines its organizational structure and eliminates the CEO and chief store office roles, officer roles. The retailer also secured 500 million in additional financing, including 375 million loan from the Sixth Street Partners, bringing its total liquidity to about 1 billion. Bed Bath & Beyond stock was down 28% 
as of the market closed on Friday, since the plan was revealed on Wednesday. So, you know, they, they, they're announcing this major um, deal, but Wall Street is not impressed. Let's go to another uh, Yahoo Finance article and find out also, again, what Wall Street thinks about, <laughs> thinks about this, this whole plan. talks about Bed Bath & Beyond's biggest problem going forward. <laughs> it said Bed Bath & Beyond is a smoldering pile of garbage. <laughs> so that's the language that they're using for Bed Bath & Beyond. Let's read this again for, for those who are a bit... Those who think that Wall Street is a bit on the fence for this, this stock, they're not really sure which way is it going. They don't, they, they're not really showing their hand as to how they, they really think about it. It said that Bed Bath and Beyond is a smoldering pile of garbage, experts say, as the struggling retailer's existential future hangs in the balance. The big question has become, will Bed Bath and Beyond run out of money? While the company revealed drastic steps on on Wednesday to raise 500 million in debt plus a potential 12 million share sales, cut expenses close to 150 stores uh, and 20% of the workforce, and after an alter the sales trajectory, Wall Street thinks that the retail outlook remains highly uncertain. The main concern is that Bed Bath & Beyond is performing so poorly, some store sales failed 26% in the most recent quarter, and the balance sheet is in such a sorry uh, shape that the company will be forced to raise even more cash in 2023, where and when the, the, that cash come from is a great unknown. All right, so this is the the news and, and the fundamental. Like, if, if you're not clear as to what <laughs> Wall Street thinks about Bed Bath and Beyond, they think it's a smoldering pile of garbage. <laughs> All right, so this is the fundamental. So now what we're going to do, we're going to look at the, the what um they're looking like on the charts and get into some technical analysis and look at what the charts are telling us about Bed Bath and Beyond. So let's bring up trading view and do some technical analysis on these charts for bed, bath, and beyond. So this is our four screen setup of bed, bath, and beyond on trading view. Um, this is our template, and you might see some custom indicators on here. These custom indicators are things that we've bespokely created to help us analyze the markets, right? So um, if you guys want to get hold of our custom indicators and our templates, and also, you know, get the knowledge of how to analyze stocks yourself, then go on to focusoninvesting.io. There we have an investment syllabus that teaches you everything you know on how to read charts and learn how to, you know, analyze not only stocks, but crypto, also commodities and forex charts in order to make better investments. You know, we get into a time where, you know, those who are highly educated and know how to recharge are the ones who are going to survive through this uncertain, prof, um, uncertain, uncertain period. You know, we've seen a lot of dips, you know, especially with the crypto market crashing, a lot of the stock market crashing. You know, those who can't read the markets are those who are going to get, you know, caught out. So again, guys, if you guys want to learn how to, you know, read the markets, not only that, you know, we have certain premium stocks and premium trades that we can't share on YouTube. There are certain techniques that we cannot share on YouTube. So if you want to get the secret to, you know, how to pick the key stocks that are going to do well and how to, you know, really learn how to analyze stocks, then they're going to go to focus on investing.io. All right, let's get into these charts. Let's start with the monthly time frame here on Bed Bath & Beyond. What we like to do is like to zoom out and get an overall look at what this stock has been doing over the year. So this is the monthly time frame. So we can, oh, we're still going back further. Okay, let's begin. So we can see that they had their IPO or their initial public offering or the entrance into the stock market in June 1992. So they've been going for a little while now. Let me bring up my arrow. We can see here as they got into the market, had a bit of a steady, steady, you know, 
movement going sideways. And then from May 1995, we can see that's when they really started to take off. And they had quite a bit of strong growth, actually. They grew all the way from 1995 to 2003. And then we had this kind of leveling off period here. So they was kind of trading within a kind of channel. Let's see, maybe the channel was from about. I had a channel going. A little consolidation channel. Price. We've got a few little fake outs here, August 05. Little fake out here on July 06. But we can see from the whole of 03 to 07, we had a bit of sideways consolidation. Then we saw after the consolidation, we saw it break down, down to a level of you know, $16.19 per share. And then since then, they went again on quite a good run. So when this stock does run, it does run for quite a good while and it does run quite well. So we had a run all the way from, you know, November 08 to May 12, right? So that's what, four years, four years run. So if you was in this, quite a bit of a good growth. You can see it had quite a deep pullback here. It does tend to do that. It goes on good runs and it has like quite deep pullbacks. See a deep pullback here, deep pullback here, deep pullback here again. We see these these pullbacks in these little fake outs. Down, went on a great run, quite a deep pullback. And then went back up again. Again, as we said, all the way to 12, June 12. And then we came back down. Come back up to our all-time high. Broke that high, created new all-time highs. And then came back down again. So you can see here, we created a double bottom. It was a double bottom over a certain amount of time from 12, 2012 to 2015. So over a three-year period, we created a double bottom. First bottom was here, created our middle there, came back down again, and then came back up. Now, on the second time we came back up, we didn't come all the way back up to our all-time high of $80.94. We didn't, we didn't come that high. So we, we, we came close to our all-time high on January 15. And then since then, the stock has really just plummeted. There's been no, you know, no growth since 2015 on our spike all the way down to our lowest low, which is April 2020. And we know we have the pandemic situation. So that took us all the way down. But even before that, we was plummeting and spiking all the way down. I mean, if we look from, you know, December 2016 to October 2017, so almost a year, non-stop red candles, complete tanking. And even before that, if you look here, good solid blocks of red candles, you know, red bars going all the way through. So after the pandemic, we saw we got a bit of a recovery and a gap up. So it looked quite strong. And then we see this spike here from January 2021. We see this spike going to create in like, well, not all time highs, but new recent highs, right? We can see here that it spiked all the way up to about $54.07. And it was like just a spike, spike within the month, had a bit of sideways um, movement, uncertainty, fell back down again to pre gap levels. We can see the, the gap here, came back up again, didn't quite, quite reach our spike and then tanked right down again. And then here we can see this pump spike, as we know what this was. And then today on this month, you know, although we're only, what, four days in, and, you know, a couple of those days, the market has been closed because it's been a weekend. But we can see that we've got a red bearish candle for the month. And then for this month, we're trading at, currently trading at $8.63. So let's take a look at the weekly time frame to get a better look at these charts. Let's bring up our weekly screen. Let's refresh this. Let's get a better look at our charts. We can zoom in a bit, a bit closer. And we can see that, you know, currently we're having completely red trend filter. You know, we've been on a red trend filter since the 7th of September. So since the 7th of, 7th of September, 
you know, price has been on a strong decline, you know, with this chart. And even when we had these pump and dump spikes, you know, we never actually got out of our red trend filter. But prior to that, you know, going back to between 27th of July and the 30th of August, we could see that we was in a green bullish trend. So, you know, the stock was looking up for a while. It was looking quite well. And then since that point, it's been, you know, down. We see that price is currently trading below both of our moving averages. We've got the 50 simple moving average and the 200 simple moving average, which represents the average price over 200 days and 50 days. So essentially price is trading below the average price over 50 days and 200 days, all right? And then if we look at some of our, you know, key pivot levels, we're also trading below quite a few key pivot levels. You know, we've got one, two, three, four red ones that are representing various points because we've had so much up and down movement it's created a lot of pivot levels and pivot levels can act as a strong level of support and resistance so the red ones will be acting more as a level of support and the green ones are more a level of resistance but when you're below them you know all areas act as a level of resistance and when you're above them all levels act as an area of support so you know ideally for price if you want price to go up you want a clear run to you know your most all-time highs or your most recent highs without any pivot levels in between and we can see here we've got quite a few pivot levels in between we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen if you want to go further back maybe 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 and even though these ones are a bit further back, you know, these ones can still come into play, especially like these ones that are very long. The longer that they are, the more stronger that they are as well. So they could be significant, you know, pivot levels. And ideally, you want pivot levels between current price and your lowest price, the stock price, you know, falling down. And below where we currently are, we've got one, two, th three between um, current price and the lowest pivot level. Um, and again, probably the most strongest pivot level would be this one at the bottom here. So, you know, price is currently tanking and falling at the moment. It's likely that price is going to fall down to this pivot layer level here at 442. You know, because price was leveling off to that, that price before we got this dramatic spike, this pump and this dump. And then we can see price looks like it's going to resettle back down at this 442 level. Let's go to our daily time frame and see where we're at. Bring the chart closer. Look at today's bar, or today's candlestick. Let me just refresh the chart. All right. So let's zoom in, get a bit of a closer look. All right, we can see that current price is at $8.63. Again, we can see that our trend filter is actually green. So remember, our trend filter is a bespoke custom indicator from us that focus on investing. And basically, what the trend filter basically tells us is if the trend of the stock is either bullish or bearish. So if it's bullish, it would have a green trend filter. And if it's bearish, it will have a red trend filter. And that's not to be confused with individual bars or individual candlesticks, right? We can have a bearish candlestick in a bullish trend. And we can have a bullish uh, candlestick in a bearish trend. And you can tell the actual color of the actual candlestick because the outline of the stick will show it. So you can see, for instance, this um, candlestick or this bar here, we can see that the body of it is green, meaning the trend filter as in terms of a trend is in, in a bullish trend but the outline is red. So that means it's a bearish candlestick or a red candlestick and it's on a, on a bearish day. So, you know, don't get confused between the two. And again, if you want to get access to our custom bespoke indicators, then go to focusoninvesting.io. Um, we've got the link in the description as well. So we can see that current price is $8.63, right? And as I said, we've got a green trend filter. Now we had, I think, what do we have? Do we have a red trend filter? Yeah, we had a red trend filter on the monthly time frame. So ideally, we like to see correlation. We like to see both green or both red on both the weekly and daily. But here we don't have correlation, right? So this is not a good sign for the stock. That means it doesn't have a particular direction or particular overall trend, right? 
So for the day, we're at six dollars and eighty-three cents. But if we look at the you know percentages over you know the the, the, the past week, month, and day, we can see that for the day we're down zero point nine two percent. On the previous day, we're down eight point six percent. For the week, we're down nineteen point three five percent. And for the month, we're down 9.44%. So across the board, we're really down. Like price is, is, is fundamentally down. And this is all because of this dump after this artificial pump that we had, right? But, you know, although we are down and down, we're still in a bullish trend because, because of the pump. The pump pushed us high enough that even though we're having a bit of a dump and a pullback, we haven't come all the way back down to our previous lows, right? And we're not in a bearish trend because we haven't dumped as far as we pumped, right? So the pump did push us up to a certain high. But again, I feel that, you know, the, the, the pump is an artificial one. And typically what happens with pump and dumps, it's just that it's a brief pump and then a, a rapid dump, right? So, you know, you, when you want growth, you ideally want steady growth over time. See, if it grows slowly, then it will decline slowly. If it pumps fast, it will dump fast as well. So you see price is currently trading at a level of support. And this level of support is the 50 simple moving average. The 50 simple moving average is just keeping price from dumping currently, right? We're trading below our 200 simple moving average and our 20 simple moving average. And we can see that price, you know, gap down. When price gaps in any direction, it's especially when it's against you, it's not a good sign. That shows that, that price is moving rapidly. Um, even when the market is closed. So when the market reopens, it reopens at a much lower price and it jumps and skips a lot of other prices, okay? Let me bring up, I think we're missing one indicator here. Yeah, we are. Let's bring up this indicator here. And this indicator tells us, you know, how far down we're off of our high. So we're actually down 71.291% of our high, right? So we're down quite a bit. The, 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 the pump artificially pumped and inflated our prices, but we're still down. So I say currently we're at this level of support, which is the 50 simple moving average. I don't think price is going to hold there. I think that we're going to see price come back down to this area of support, which is our pivot level. So for those who are shorting this, I think this area here is going to be our profit zone. I think the, the 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 short sellers, if you got if you've got any short here, coming down to here is a great look for you. And then here will be your profit zone. So if you can capture that price movement, I think it's something that you can keep an eye on. And it'll be something that will be relatively good for you because, again, the trend of price is, although we're in NA, it's got green trend filter. You know, again, to reiterate, this is because of the pump of price, right? So the trend is very much bearish. We're currently at a level of support on the 50 simple moving average. But even if we go back in, 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 in past time, we can see that this stock doesn't really respect the 50 simple moving average. Some stocks you will see every time they come against the 50 simple moving average, they will bounce and show that they respect the 50 simple moving average as a level of support. But if we go back in time, we don't see any sort of, you know, response to the 50 simple moving average. This doesn't really respect any moving averages, neither the 200 simple moving average. And generally the 200 simple moving average is quite a strong level of support and resistance in stocks but in this chart we don't see it at all it's not respecting any of the moving averages we don't see any bounce off of the 20 the 50 or the 200 so i doubt that this 50 simple moving average is going to act as any sort of level of support for us all right guys um thank you very much for joining us and again check out these next videos that we've got coming up on the channel you know these channels we've got we've also got like in-depth reviews that we do here of particular individual stocks or if you just want to keep up to date of the general what's going on with all of the latest trending stocks within the market then check out our full market review videos where we run through all the latest trending stocks in the market so you can keep up to date with the movers and shakers all right guys thank you for joining us